Yo, what's going on everyone? It's Brian and Jim here with Drink a Beer and Play a Game, and today we're checking out Castlevania 3 for the NES. Originally released in 1989, this was developed and published by Konami. It came out on the NES slash Famicom, Windows, Virtual Consoles, a whole bunch of collections, shit like that. It's not as widely available as some other games, but you know what? It got released a lot. And chronologically, it's the first game in the Castlevania series. At least of the original three on the NES. I mean, maybe it's not in the whole scheme of things, but I'm not going to do that much research. Also, this time it stars Trevor Belmont, instead of Simon, and a cast of other characters, as you try to kill Dracula, because of course you do, because it's Castlevania. Jim! Ah, uh, what? One of the characters' name is Alucard, and it's Dracula's son, if you spell it backwards, it's Dracula! Thank you, Brian. Uh, is that the same Alucard from Symphony of the Night? It sure is. Oh boy! Heh, <laughs> watch this be wrong. This game was also the inspiration for the Castlevania series that's on Netflix right now. You should go watch it, it's pretty good. I mean, I haven't seen it, but I hear it's pretty good. Fry, is it good? It's amazing and they're coming out with a second season! Okay, so it sucks. <laughs> anyway, on to the review. God damn it, Jim. Anyway, the graphics. Uh, yeah, they're really damn good for the NES. My personal preference against the NES color palette aside, this is just a great looking game. Everything is so friggin' detailed from your characters to the enemies, especially to the boss characters, holy crap. Another great thing is the fact that all the backgrounds really kinda look different from each other, and they're varied and detailed. Now, granted, a lot of the religious imagery was taken out of the North American version, but that's just something we gotta deal with here because Nintendo of America were babies. Besides that, there's not that much to say. It's just a fantastic looking game, and it really pushes the NES to the limits. Sure, there can be some flicker and slowdown in some of the more graphically heavy parts, like when you're doing scene transitions and there's a lot of sprites on screen, but that's kind of common for the NES, so we're gonna forgive it in this case. But really, there's not a lot to complain about, so we gave in tens. And when it comes to beer, you don't really need any. The sound. Holy shit, this game is impressive. When you think of the best soundtracks on the NES, there's no way this isn't at least in your top 10. For me personally, it's in my top 5, arguably my number 1 spot. But putting aside the fact of whether you think the soundtracks are iconic, you have to respect how well composed and just how different they are. From level to level, boss fights, and just little moments, the, the soundtrack can really change and, and really fill in the atmosphere of you going through all the different levels and fighting all these different enemies. Of course, the sound effects themselves, they're semi-standard, I will say that, but they're all appropriate. Other than that though, the sound effects aren't really the star of the show, it's that soundtrack. And it is worth mentioning that the Famicom version actually contained a specialized VRC6 coprocessor chip. All that really means is that they had the ability to add in a few different channels to the sound, which made it sound a little more synthesized, like for a string section, which means it just sounded better. Unfortunately, the North American NES did not have the ability to support this, but I gotta be honest, for Jim and me, it still sounds amazing. That's really awesome that it sounded even better on the Famicom, but we had to give it tens. With everything else that we love about it, the fact that this game pulled some of the classic soundtracks from Castlevania 1 and 2 and added little re remixes to them is, a, is something that the future Castlevania series would continue. So just for that reason, and starting such an awesome trend, I'm going to give one celebratory beer. The Control. Honestly, it's standard Castlevania fare for the NES. You move, you do your whip, you jump, you throw your special weapon by hitting up and B. It's a lot of everything you've seen before. It's still just as stiff as it ever was, which is part of the programming for the game to make it maybe a little bit harder, but to us, it's fine, because if you play as much Castlevania as we do, you just get used to it, even though it can be a little annoying and bullshit. And then all the special characters can do their special abilities by hitting down and B, so... Grant can climb on the ceiling, or Cypher can cast an extra spell, or Alucard can turn into a bat. So it's cool that they add a little bit more there. But, like I said, standard Castlevania fare. If you like it, you're gonna still like it. If you don't like it, it's not gonna win you over. So Brian gave it an 8, and I gave it a 7. I still think it's a little bit more bullshitty than Brian does, but eh, oh well. And when it comes to beer, I'll give it one beer for new abilities. Why not? 
the gameplay. Let me just start by saying the legendary difficulty of this series was really cemented with this title. Ah! It made me miss some of the levels in the first Castlevania with just the amount of death traps, the lack of the goddamn pork chops you get, and just the sheer number of enemies you'll have coming at you on screen. But the one thing this game really added to have the difficulty go through the roof, at least in my opinion, are some of these levels where you're just waiting for the screen to move up, or you have blocks falling to create your path. They just really took this game in a direction that perfected the Castlevania style on the NES, as Jim said before, and with the addition of the new characters, you could adjust your strategy accordingly. There were many, many levels where I would just keep dying over and over because I was just sick of getting knocked back, falling into a pit, so I said, fuck it, I'm just going to turn into Alucard and fly to the end. Some people might view it as cheap, I view it as F you to the game because you've wasted all my hearts. But either way, this is a game I absolutely love. It's everything you enjoy about the challenge of Castlevania, with the platforming being as precise as it needs to be, and Jim already touched on the control and how we feel about that. But other than that, the bosses are even more varied than before, and with all the different paths you can take, you're gonna keep wanting to come back, try this game out, and figure out what's the best way to go and who's your favorite character to play as. I, we love how much deeper this system is for the Castlevania series, so we both gave it nines. This is the best Castlevania on the system, without a doubt, even though I probably played Castlevania 1 a lot more. This is a tough son of a bitch, so don't expect to beat it anytime soon. When it comes to beer, I'm gonna add one, just because you're gonna need that for all the times you're gonna die in this terribly tough game. Originality. At its core, this is still just normal Castlevania action, which is a great thing. But it does add some things. Like Brian said, or really that both of us have said already. You have the different characters, so you have the different abilities, and they play a little bit differently, which, you know, gives you a reason to go and try and play as each different character. You have, like, four different endings, depending on what characters you pick up along the way, or if you did it by yourself, which is always cool. And just the fact you have the branching paths is also a nice touch. Sure, Castlevania 2 has more open-ended and you could kind of go where you wanted, but we think the branching path system of a more linear game is still unique enough from the other games. So, with all that being said, we gave it fives. Not a ton of originality here, but everything they added really does enhance the game. And when it comes to beer, I'm just gonna add one beer for branching paths. The replayability I can keep pretty quick. You have the different characters, you have the different paths, you have the different endings, so... Really, it gives you a lot of different ways to play the game, and it's ridiculously hard, so you're gonna have to play it again and again in order to get through the game. And you're gonna have to play it a few times to get through all the different branching paths to see everything. We gave it eights. Maybe that's a little higher than it truly deserves, but again, with how much you're gonna have to play to get through everything, you're gonna be spending a lot of time with it if you're more of the completionist type. And when it comes to beer, I'm gonna add two beers for ripping your goddamn hair out as you try to see every freaking stage in this game. Jesus Christ. Overall, this is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, NES titles. Obviously, with all the horror influences, I'm gonna be drawn to a game like this. But putting that aside, we've said, this is a really deep game. You need to be at your highest level of playing if you're gonna complete it all the way through, so the challenge is there. But it's a game that is fair, because... While sometimes the challenges can seem overwhelming. God damn it, do that! She's a pain in the ass too. Or There's always a way to beat it. Once you figure it out, you kind of smack yourself in the head like, oh, son of a bitch. But even when you know the pattern, it's still all about executing it. I love the fact that this just deepened the entire story behind the Castlevania series. And yeah, I've already said, it's the best Castlevania on the NES. And there's no way we could have done the top four best NES games and not included this. So, when it comes to scores, we both gave it nines. When we round all of our scores together, it comes out to an 8.6. Of course, it breaks my heart that it's a little bit lower than my overall score, but you know what? I'm used to it at this point with the way we rate games. And in all fairness, that is what this deserves. We've seen a lot of people really try and defend the control in this game, but that to me is still one of the biggest flaws. If the control was perfect and you didn't have that weird mechanic of getting knocked back 
when you do get hit, which always ends up knocking you down a pit and giving you an instant death, this game would still be hard as hell. I truly don't believe you needed that extra level to make this any harder. So that can take away from the game. Putting that aside, it's an excellent title. It's probably more expensive than most people are willing to spend on a game right now, but it's very well worth the dollars. So go out, get it if you can. When it comes to beer pairing, I decided to go with the Flemish Red Ale Grand Cru from the Brewery Stroob. Coming to us all the way from Belgium, this is actually a really delicious beer, and if you're lucky enough to try it like I was, then you know what I'm talking about. It's a style that's very unique, and for a game that's as good as this, I didn't want to go with the standard fare. Coming in at 6.5%, one bottle will last you fairly long in this game, and with a beer that just gives you a feeling of the ancient times, I feel like this is something that Trevor Belmont would have sipped on in between killing all these vampires. So, if you can find a bottle, pick it up and enjoy yourself. But remember to drink your beers and play your games responsibly. As always guys, thanks for checking out this video, and if you enjoyed it, make sure you give us a thumbs up, leave some comments, or better yet, why not subscribe? Till next time guys, cheers.